All right, guys. Hey, welcome to the show. This is the Real Estate Jock with uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Claude Diamond. Thank back you. On the show. Back on the show. Uh, we really enjoyed having you the first time. Um, and um, I, I just wanted to kind of bring you back today. How are you doing, by the way? I am fine. What an intro. The man, the myth, the legend. I hope my <laughs> wife heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so first off, man, what have you been up to? What's the latest and greatest? I know you've been going back and forth from Colorado to San Diego. So, uh, fill everybody in. I mean, what's, what's, we just turned over the calendar to 2018. What's on your agenda for this year? Uh, exciting, anything exciting you want to share with us? Um, you know, I'm pretty happy that a lot of my predictions have come true. Uh, um, I, yes, I do live in different places, different times of the year. Um, also going to Pinehurst, North Carolina in a week, uh, go there, spend a little time there. Um, I, my predictions for 2018, uh, which is a YouTube video I did, um, basically said there would be a stock market adjustment, a short one, a little bit of a bubble. And I didn't know it would happen so early in the year in February. And as we just experienced, we just had a, a, a drop. Uh, in the stock market. It was an emotional adjustment. I call that pretty well on my predictions. I also predicted that Bitcoin would take a dive, a dump, and boy, it dropped over 50%. Um, so, so far, so good. I also predicted that real estate in certain parts of this country would remain very healthy because of a limited inventory and low interest rates. And also, the economy is very healthy right now. We have a historical low unemployment. These are all the things that make for people to be optimistic. And we have a gigantic marketplace of millennials who have been either uh, renting apartments or living in their parents' attic or something like that. And they want to get their own home. They finally got to their 30s and they say, you know what? I want to do what mom and dad did when they were 18, 19, and 20. I want to get a car and I want to get a house. I want the American dream. So we've got this big influx of people coming into the marketplace finally. So I'm very optimistic. I'm a happy person. I focus on what do I need to do to stay happy. Um, passion in my profession. I enjoy. I love what I do. I make a great living at it. Uh, and I never take vacations. I live them. I just summarize my philosophy of life. Okay. When you say that, when you say I want to pick up right there where you left off as far as living a vacation uh, some people call them paycations. I've heard them call them paycations. Where Never heard that. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> so can you can you help us understand a little bit more what's your version of living a vacation uh, and why that's such an important creed to live by for you? Well, when I first got out of college, I had a job. And it was a good company, and I had to wear a suit, and I had to sit in traffic and spill coffee between my legs every day in a company car while I sat waiting to get across the George Washington Bridge into New York City. And I said, boy, uh, this is, uh, I can't wait till the weekend. I counted down the days, the hours, till the Friday came along where I could just party or have fun or do the things that were important to me. And I always thought about vacations. When's my vacation? You know, when's those two lousy weeks a year that I get my life back a little bit? And I thought, is this, I was, you know, in my 20s, and I thought, is this what my life is supposed to be? And, you know, when I, do ta when I did take vacations, um, vacations are rush, 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 spend a lot of money, eat food that I normally don't eat. You always gain, do you ever notice you gain a little weight on vacations? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> you know? And stuff like that. And it's nice to get away. But by the time you travel and the lost luggage and the late flights and maybe bad weather and expense and everything, it wasn't really a vacation as much as you wanted it to be. And then you got to go back to the same old lifestyle. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to live where you want to live? I live in the mountains with my wife, Claudia. We live in the mountains in Colorado, 10,000 feet up. Beautiful. Every morning is beautiful um, there. And we live in San Diego. We've been here over 31 years, I think. Uh, we love it. Today, it's going to be 78 degrees here in February. Okay, I can go to the beach. I can go running. I can drive three hours and go skiing if I wanted to. Um, I love California. So my, my theory of life is life is short. Enjoy it. Stay healthy. Do something you love and don't take a vacation when you can live it. Live in the okay. live in the places you always wanted to live. Okay. So that was so a long answer to a. <laughs> well, I mean, you're passionate. I mean, it's it's a it's an interesting uh, perspective. A lot of people, I'm sure, when you thought about living this sort of virtual lifestyle, where you were wherever you wanted to be, 
Uh, I know you have a family of two kids, uh, a wife. You're not just some single guy running around the United States. So, you know, how did you get that past uh, everybody? Was was your wife kind of, I know, you, I know I'm sure she had a couple of questions when you first thought about living this type of lifestyle. How did you get the family buy-in, uh, I guess is my question, in regards to your virtual uh, lifestyle or living a vacation, as you said? Well, we always had a benign dictatorship. The children did what we told them to. They didn't really have a, vo a voice in it. They were pretty young anyway. Um, on that, um, I, you know, and I think they loved when we moved to different places. My wife, uh, a lot of this was his or her encouragement. Um, you know, uh, we wanted to, we loved the country, so we thought about Colorado. We, you know, we liked living in different places. Um, the business, um, back to the business though, the business being a, a gut salesman allowed me the lux, the financial freedom. Here's that word again, the freedom, the freedom to live where I wanted to and not and not just take, a, you know, a vacation somewhere else. You know, I, when I used to live on the, the New Jersey, I love New Jersey. I moved there from New York City with my parents, but the winters are very long and cold. And I couldn't wait to get when I had the freedom or I could get a cheap airfare. I couldn't wait to get on that airplane and go to Florida. And you, you, you're from Florida. You know what I'm talking about. And, and, and then I thought, wow, why can't I always live here? And my wife is the one who suggested uh, California. She said, uh, I said, I'm going to go to law school somewhere. She said, check, let's check out San Diego. We went here. I got off the plane in, what was it, hon, March or November. November in New Jersey can be very cold and wet. And I got off the plane and it was 72 degrees and sunny and there were palm trees and in and out burger places and beaches and... And, and people skateboarding and, and, every, and I said, I'm home. This is where I want to live. And yeah. man, we just did it. We just did awesome. it. We're young. So sometimes don't overthink things. Just do it. Just do it. Awesome. Sounds now, like a Nike commercial. first started this journey, of, uh, if you don't mind me asking. How long ago? Yeah, how, how long ago was it? Uh, I moved to San Diego uh, 31 years ago. Oh wow! Nine, yeah, nineteen eighty-six or something. We, bought, yeah, thirty-two years ago, uh, actually got the house in Colorado about twenty years ago. Yeah, and um, uh, you know we're still adapting and changing and everything. You know, you don't have to have your life written in stone um, when you have that freedom. I work from home. I help people all over the world in sales persuasion, being comfortable on the phone. It's the million dollar skill. And to me, the technology caught, I used to just work on the telephone or I'd get on airplanes all day long. Uh, you know, every week, different flights and stuff that, you know, and the technology with Skype and Zoom and Facebook Messenger. And now I can do video just like we're doing right now. I can talk to people anywhere in the world. Uh, I'm in their living room, they're in my office, and I, I can do it from my car. My car has Wi-Fi now. I have iPhones and everything. The t this is the best time I've ever seen for someone to start a business and, and have the lifestyle they want. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. I mean, it's, it's such a... Uh... Just a great time to be alive. Just, just with all the information that's available, like you said, the technology. Um, yeah. You know, one, one of the big suggestions I got from you actually was, you know, using FaceTime and Skype when you're first meeting a customer or doing something like that. And it's really um, enhanced my ability because I've always kind of thought of myself as a, as better face to face than on the phone um, because I'm able to connect a little bit better and um, and better you know, time management too, right? Yeah, absolutely. What do millionaires do that? What do millionaires do and billionaires do differently from the other ninety nine percent? What do one of percenters do? They put they have the same twenty four hours, but they they use their time better. Mm -hmm. They use absolutely. their time. I don't. When someone wants a meeting with me, I'll only go to a meeting if I'm picking up a check or a contract, and if I can do that meeting on video right now. Uh, why would I want to get in my car and, and drive three hours from San Diego to, if I'm lucky, three hours from San Diego to L.A. in traffic to have a meeting when I can do it instantly in my in the comfort of my home? Better better coffee, cleaner bathrooms. <laughs> okay, well, that takes me to the, you know, some of the core questions I had for you today, Claude, was, um, you know, I know last time we had you on the show, you talked a little bit about, or a lot of bit about real estate. Today, I want to focus a little bit more on sales which is I know you invented the gut sale system, uh, but specifically, specifically, 
um, you know, sales and and the, the type of sales you teach and the type of sales that I think you've built your business on, your philosophy and your ability to live this lifestyle is high ticket sales, right? I mean, you're, you're not doing the, the $200 sales. You're not making a living off of that. And there's obviously people who are out there who are doing that. Today, the content that, that I wanted to kind of focus on was the high ticket price point of being able to legitimately close five, ten, twenty thousand dollar deals over a conversation. And and you even talk about being able to do this on one phone call. So talk to me about you know how you were able to develop those skills. Um, I totally understand you know the philosophy behind it, but you know, there'll be times where I talk to people and I say, hey, you know, um, do you think you could sell a five or $10,000 customer that you've never met before besides doing a Skype call or a FaceTime call? And they'll be like, you're crazy. You know, I, I, you know, they're selling much lesser items and they're having to do one, two, three, four follow-ups to try to get a $1,500 check. So, you know, I would love to hear more about, you know, the strategies you, you the strategy you, you have used in the past in regards to high ticket sales um, and, and being able to, in your mind, have the confidence level to close somebody in one phone call. The um, um, one of the big uh, epiphanies, revelations of my life was having a mentor, and it's uh, the one takeaway that I share in every interview I do. Find somebody who's doing it honestly and better than you and financially successful, of course, uh, and learn from them. So you shorten the learning curve. The, the shortening that I got from my mentor was that I saw that he closed somebody. I was in real estate. I still am. Um, he closed somebody in one phone call. I, I asked him at the end. I said, is that someone you know or anything? Because I heard him close this person on the phone. I was there standing around, you know, and... He says, no, that was the first phone call. He made more money on that one phone call than I made in a whole year at a corporate job I didn't like. And it blew me away because, as you said earlier, I was the guy, I didn't want to push anybody. I didn't want to be uh, the pushy sales guy. I didn't want to be offensive or anything. Oh, you know, uh, Mr. Santiago, I'll, I'll get that information from you and we can talk in the near distant future and I'll call you in a week or two. And this back and forth, back and forth sales. And what I learned from Max, my mentor, I've written several books. I'm reading, I'm writing a new book now, uh, two new books, actually. One is The Rules of Guts and the, Nick, and the other book behind that is Sales is Dangerous. Um, this all, it, and I'll explain that later if you want to interview me on another time about that. But what I learned is that the million dollar rule from Max, people make immediate, instant business decisions emotionally. If you can capture that emotion, you still have to justify it intellectually, logically. It has to make sense to people, otherwise you're going to get that buyer's remorse stuff all day long. But if you speak to people and you ask questions and you stay, if you know anything about me, I hate presentations. My people do not give presentations until the very end of a conversation after they've properly qualified and they don't use scripts. Scripts are caca. Scripts are garbage. Okay. No, but what you have to do is learn to speak to somebody and get them talking more than you, which is very difficult, difficult for a guy like me with a real big mouth. Okay. And because I'm very enthusiastic, I have a lot of knowledge, I love to help people, but one of the hardest things for me to do is <laughs> this sometimes. To be a yeah. better listener is one of the things I'm always working on. I don't think I've mastered it yet, have I, dear? No, no see? Um, <laughs> you you, you want to think about that? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I kind of think that the big sale, people will make commitment we have this in our head that we can't rush a big sale, like in real estate, where houses can go for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. People can make instant decisions on very expensive capital goods, property, whatever, cars, instantly, if the EQ, the emotional quotient, is correct. That is our job to ask the questions, to make that person uh, persuade them, influence them in such a way almost into a hypnotic state where they say, I want this. 
I need this. And they justify it in their own head and they ratify it intellectually later. But we, it is our response, uh, the gut system is about learning to persuade and influence people very quickly. Okay. And so um, that being said, did you find it at all challenging when you went from, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you were doing previous to this, but when you start to go up to, I'm sure there was a time when you had never sold a $10,000 um, account or a twenty thousand dollar account, or, or you knew that this one phone call had twenty thousand uh, dollars on the line. So talk to me a little bit about that first few times you did that. What was that experience like? And some people will actually say it's easier to sell to people who have the money to spend on that level of a purchase than the people who are selling five hundred dollar items or thousand dollar items. Can you speak to me a little bit about that? The, the big problem, um, the, uh, I forgot who said it. Um, I think it's uh, Julius Caesar. The, oh, the fault lies not in the stars, dear Brutus. It lies in ourselves. I think it's from Shakespeare. It's, we have to take responsibility for ourselves. We have to be our own cheerleader. A lot of times we don't do things because we lack in confidence. We say, oh, I don't know all the answers. I don't want to be pushy. I don't have enough prospects, so I better be really nice to this one prospect. I may not get another for a week or two. And it's really our fault. We have to be assertive. We have to be, um, we have to be res um, gain respect as an authority figure in sales. And we have to go for it sometimes. We've got to push ourselves uh, on it. So for me, the transition, it was difficult. Uh, thank goodness I had a mentor. And he said, think of all the times you go back and forth with all the I'll think about it. So I'll talk to this person that. Send me this. Send me that. And then you get no commitment, you get no reward. I need a reward. Okay, I, you know, um, this is where I have a big uh, disagreement with uh, some very famous people out there who say you need patience, patience, patience. Okay, one of them is Gary Vaynerchuk. Totally disagree with him. I think he's a not, I think he's very wrong. I think, you know, Alexander the Great ruled the world before he was 21. He didn't wait until he was 50 or 60. He went for it. And sometimes, within reason, you've got to go for it. Okay, and don't, I think impatience is a virtue. Okay, yes, you need knowledge of your product or service, in this case, real estate, and, and, but you need to be, you need to learn a system of sales so that you have this control, so that you get rewarded. And the more rewards you get, guess what happens to your ego? It goes up. It goes yes. up. You feel good about yourself. You know, when I make a sale, I, you can ask my wife. I'm two feet above the ground, man. It's euphoria. I'm happy as hell. I love making a sale and there's money in the bank. And, and it's just I, I persuaded somebody to and I want to help them, too. It's about, a lot about giving good value. Also, you can't sell bad stuff all day long. You got to give people good value, unbelievable customer service in whatever you do. You've got to distinguish yourself from your competition. You've got to, when you go to your doctor, he or she does not uh, just rush you into surgery, unless it's an emergency. They usually, when you come in the office, they ask you questions. We call that a diagnostic. Okay, we need to do that in sales. And my gut system is about learning how to ask questions, get the answers you want, finding out, do they need your product or service? Can they afford it? Do they have the character and the authority to make a commitment and keep that commitment? And is it on a timely basis? And you learn a system of asking questions, and it changes the whole way you sell. So to answer your question, yes, you work smarter, you work, and and people love you for it because you're. I, I'm the only sales guy in the world, DJ, who tells people. I beg people, please say no to me. Please fire me is what I say. DJ, I'm here to help you, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. You ask me a few. Could you do me a favor at the end of this conversation? If you don't like my product or service or, or whatever, or you're interviewing a thousand other people and you know this won't work between us, would you fire me? Would you do me that, would you do me that one favor? We'll still be friends. Boom. Yes, sir. Thank you. See, I'm taking control. I'm even telling him to fire me. But in his head, this is a pattern interrupt. This is a guts move. He's going, wow. No one's ever said that before. I don't even know how to react to this. Yeah. These, these are the things I learned from my mentor, Max, and why I use the, utilize these today. 
uh, on that. And it's all about sales. It's all about sales, DJ. One phone call or two or three. It's about do you feel good about yourself and are you going to the bank today? Okay. Another long so, answer to a good question. Sorry. So, so um, do you feel, because I'm sure you've sold low ticket items. And, yeah. And now, now you're selling high ticket items. Yeah. Do you feel that it's that much different or is it actually easier to sell high ticket items? I think it's the same. It's Maybe the same. you didn't expect that answer. Yeah. I do the same psychological moves. I use the same gut system. Whether it's um, a 995 book, or someone called me up for one of my uh, books that I send individually on Amazon. Hi, I was thinking about buying your book for $29 on Amazon, whatever it goes for. I said, well, uh, well I appreciate you calling me, sir, stroke, nurture. Um, wh what was it you were concerned about before you spent the $29? Do you have the $29? What do you want to get out of the book? Okay. Not many times they can call the author of a book before they buy it, but I, I make my part of my marketing is to make myself very approachable. I use the same, I work just as hard on a $29 book and a $9.95 package as I will do on a $25 or $50,000 sales coaching sales program. Wow. Or a million dollar house. It's the same thing. What The question to ask is, this is the empathy part I was talking about earlier, why should someone buy from me today? With all this competition out there, why would they, why will this human being who works hard for their money and wants value and doesn't know me very well, why should they buy from me today? That's the question I ask myself. Okay. Well, as we're closing out the show here, I'd like to go through a real quick fire round where I ask you five questions and you give me five answers. Uh, and uh, we'll round out the show that way. How's that sound? I hope I can do them fast. Okay. Okay. All right. First question. Biggest sales, uh, biggest Ticket sales you've ever done on the phone? The biggest ticket sale I ever did on the phone? Uh, you mean in terms of real estate or just the most important sale? I would say I would say the biggest ticket item. Uh, biggest Stock ticket, uh, re uh, real estate, seven-figure real estate. Okay. Uh, most common objection you hear after you ask for the sale? Uh, money. Uh, I don't ask for the sale, by the way. I make them give it to me. Money is the number one objection for many people. Okay. Um, hardest part about lease purchasing? Um, learning, learning how to control, uh, learning the, the uh, different, w there are many different ways to construct a lease purchase. You have to learn all the different strategies. There's more than one strategy for a lease purchase. It's more than just rent to own. You have to learn a lot of different strategies so that you're knowledgeable enough to solve the problem. Can a person become an entrepreneur if they don't know how to sell? No. Care to elaborate? I think um, sales, whether you're selling a product, a service, you're convincing someone to invest in your company, you're trying to get people to believe in you, whether you work from the pulpit or the chair or the boardroom or knocking on doors. Sales is the million dollar skill. The ability to persuade other people to like you, to trust you, to believe in you, believe you're giving value and service is the ultimate skill of success in entrepreneurism. Okay. Last question. Biggest uh, skill you think a person has to have to not only get success, but maintain it over 30 years, such as you have? Passion. Passion. Got to love what you're doing. It's got to be it's got to be practical, but you got to love it. You may love waxing surfboards all day long, but is anybody going to pay you for it? You've got to have the passion and it's got to be practical uh, to boot. If you love real estate, which is the greatest business in the world and you're great at it, that it, it, it's peanut butter and chocolate. You've got to have the passion for what you do, but it's also got to be practical. Awesome. Well, Claude, we've had a blast, man. This has been so much fun. we got to do this again. We never have anything to talk about. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for uh, being on the show once again. We'll, we'll definitely have you back. But uh, if, if anybody's looking to get a, a hold of you, uh, how do they contact you? I answer my own phone. Uh, like the sign says, 970-281-5151. Or you're, you have such an attractive, intelligent audience. All they have to do is Google Claude Diamond. They'll find my webpage. 
or YouTube. I have 700 videos there. I have all kinds of information for people. Uh, a lot of free information, free consultation, free books. Um, I answer my own phone. I, I believe in accountability and thank you for this interview. Awesome. Well, Real Estate Jock would love to thank you as well. And uh, until we meet again, ladies and gentlemen, Claude Diamond. Thank you. There you go.